Now, this is the big question, George. We touched upon this in the last hour, but this is the question that I was building up to. Can you talk about Jehovah in detail? And is he connected to this Enlil, who is the is talked about by Sitchin and the Sumerian tablets and so on and so forth? Yeah, I, I feel um, kind of know um, within myself that they're one and the same being. And... Uh, I do know that Jehovah is the is another name for the essence of Saturn, for the being that is Saturn. And um, there's been an age-old battle for control of the solar system between him and the sun. There's also another um, body that is insanely jealous of the sun, and that's the one you know is Nibiru or the, that brown dwarf star. So there's there's kind of like this cosmic drama that's going on here that's that's at play so um when it comes to jehovah he does have he's very controlling and he's mastered the ability to fake sincerity so he really knows how to portray the the mask of love and um, people need to be really really careful with um, what they choose to get involved with when it comes to uh, angelic um, beings and ascended masters and what have you because what he has created uh, is his own uh, universal paradigm within this universe. It's like a bubble within a bubble, if you could put it that way. That's the way I like to explain it. You know, I've always and been confused on this, though. Is Were these beings actual physical beings that came here and genetically engineered us, or were they astrotheological beings? M my intuition is telling me that they're a mixture of both. At one, one, at one point in time, these were physical beings, and then they were ascribed to astrotheology. Uh, astro both. Uh, they're definitely both because these beings exist on many different levels. And so the level that um, they function on as a planet, you see, the, when I mentioned before about the 4D cosmic arena, the fourth dimensional um, paradigm in this universe, it is colossal. It is really big. At the top of it, in, in the, when I say the top, I mean the higher frequency um, spectrums of the fourth dimension, it's it's paradigms of light. And beings there pose as light beings. They can come here and and um, be in front of you and you will see a being of light. Now, that's relative to the, um, you know, the third dimensional reality that we've been existing in. So that's why I say to people, you've got to be careful because these beings have been down in this lower part of this universe for a really, really long time. We're talking about eons and eras and epochs of evolution. They have mastered the ability to pose as light. They have mastered the ability to create their own paradigms of light and assimilate thousands and thousands of races into their paradigms. They're the ones that go and present themselves to planetary systems and star systems and and present themselves as, as, you know, higher beings. And if you want to use the word angels or ascended masters or even gods, um, and that's what they do. This is what they do, and they do it very, very well. So I'm, I'm not trying to put fear into people. What I'm trying to do is uh, empower people to say, hey, do not be naive. We've been plunged into such a negative charge for so long. Be careful of what the, these beings are capable of. And if you just continue to go within your heart, in your real heart, not, say, the heart centre of the seven chakra body system, you've got to go deeper than that into your real true heart centre. The love and the energy you experience there, use that as a point of reference and you'll be okay. And Jehovah is an entity that is basically... He's the one that's claiming to be the creator and ruler of all things everywhere. So that's the concept where the, the label we use, God, has been adopted because there's that entity claiming to be God, the creator and the ruler of all things everywhere in all of creation, which is totally insane, uh, totally deluded. He's an ego that's just totally deluded and insane. And I can say that because I've recently interacted with that energy and... Uh, when I took the, my journey through the universe, this universe, um, I actually saw where he fits in the scheme of things, and he resides at the top of the fourth dimension. Well, all now, you have to do is read the Bible, and you'll see that he's um, 
an a-hole, I guess that's the only way that I can describe him as, a very negative, jealous, hateful being. Yeah, he is, and the reality is that there is no one being that is the creator and ruler of all things everywhere. We are all the all together. You know, we are all infinite. So there's not this one entity that is the controller and the ruler of all things everywhere. There's no one supreme being, you know. And and when you connect, when you reconnect with the creator of this universe, that being will be the first one to tell you the same thing. That the the one, you know, you're inside this universe. So um, the creator of this universe will tell you, you exist infinitely beyond it does on this level of creation. There's no dramas there. It's not, uh, you just got to be careful of, because of the construct of this universe, the lower domains of this universe, the arena is so big, it's, it's created, uh, it facilitates the division within uh, self. So therefore, when one side of self becomes unaware of the other, the division and the polarization and the fragmentation is so extreme, that aspect of you gets cut off. Um, it appears as though it gets cut off. It's not really, it's never, never not connected. But you go through that appearance, or dare I say the word illusion of being separate. And, um, and these, those aspects then stay down here and continue to stay here until they wake up <laughs> to themselves, you know, and realize what they're doing. So there's a few beings that have stayed down here for a really, really long time, and they're doing a wonderful job facilitating and playing a role so they challenge us to the degree that they do. So I'm really grateful for the service that Jehovah has given me um, and all the learning that I've had, all the challenges that I've had, all the misery that I've had from him, and, uh, and I wouldn't be the man I am today without them. So I'm very, very grateful for all that learning. That is one way to look at it, definitely. And it's like I said earlier, I look at some of the negative experiences, and even though I hated going through them, in hindsight, everything worked out exactly the way it should. But let me ask you this. What's the difference between the hive mind and the collective mind? Yeah, that's a really good question, because I tend to um, use that term, collective hive minds. Uh, they're very dangerous indeed, and uh, they are more... Um, the, their philosophies are being implemented through more the Eastern... Uh, philosophies and religions. You'll be very, very careful because they function in a similar way to like a beehive or an ant hive. Uh, they have that thing where we're all one, we're all equal, and yes, we are, but their version of that is what you've got to be careful of. And um, it, it, it's more of a mental construct. Even though they use uh, heart-centered techniques, the main understanding of the oneness that they share is that you are here in this physical body and then there's just spirit and there's nothing in between and so you give yourself over to that and no identity as well they want to take your identity it's it's really dangerous because we are when i talk about identity i mean knowing self so i'm not talking ego that's something different so when you hand over your identity um that means you will cease to exist and you become what what you do is you totally give your sense of self over to this collective and that's not how the greater um, universal creator functions and the greater creation functions we are all connected we are all part of the all we are all one together but we still have our own identity if you don't have identity you don't exist so yeah that's what you've got to be really careful of because they're trying to strip you of your identity and make you as though you are nothing and you've got to be careful of this nothingness because there is the great void once you get past the great void between the fourth and the fifth dimensions you um, then go into the higher realms of this universe and then there's another void um, on the top of the seventh, between the seventh and the eighth. Then you get through that and you start getting into the realms of what we call the I am and uh, the eternal self that, um, you know, knows all and sees all, basically. So you've got to be really careful with these collective hive minds because they want to... See, see, as we came down through this universe, we co-created with the creator of this universe. You've got your own galaxy happening. We've all got galaxies. 
We are all stars and we are all planets and we're all inside one another. So you've got your galaxy, Chris, and uh, Rob is a star in your galaxy and I'm a planet around Rob. And the reason I've manifested myself as a planet is because my soul needed to experience that because your galaxy has its own unique expression and um, and what happens is people, their souls then get attracted to that vibration. That's what their soul need is, is that kind of energy for growth. So they will project an aspect of themselves into your galaxy because your galaxy um, provides a certain set of experiences which is unique to every other galaxy because you're your own unique being. Each galaxy is its own personality. It's its own person. And it's the same, each star is its own person, each planet is its own person. So everything is consciousness, everything is living beings. We've all co-created with the creator of this universe and we all exist on many other levels. And what these collectives, hive minds that I warn about do is they strip all that away and they say you are just as human, having a, and a, you're just a spirit having a human experience and, and then you, you'll just become spirit again and then there's nothing else other than that. So you've got to be very, very careful of that because they want to lure you into their energetic paradigm where you will just be like a, a, a fourth dimensional light energy and you've got to be careful of that. Like, you know, it I sounds mean, like a solar system um, pulling an object into its gravitational force. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to lure you into their paradigms and they're coming up with all these different techniques, all these different philosophies. It's like... I say that it's like it's the cookbook um, and, and what they want to do is they want to, because the entities that control these domains require to have more beings inside of them so they can feed off the energy of, of these beings. So they want to lure us into their domain so they can continue to feed off our energy. So they'll come up with the most sophisticated programs to try and trick you into falling for, you know, for following their path and luring you into their domain. And these programs are really, really sophisticated because they are eons and epochs and eras of evolution have passed in this universe and they have, are implementing the best programs available in the universe on this planet at the moment. And wait and see. I mean, when you and I spoke a while back, Chris, you even said to me that, you know, Stuff you said back then, George, nah. And other people have said this to me. Like, what you say, George, is just nuts. It's crazy. You're, you're, you're fear-mongering, you know. It's like, come on, we just started getting some good stuff in, and now you're dissing that as well. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. Don't just take on – and I didn't have this discussion with you, Chris, personally. I'm now um, sharing what I discussed with others. Um, I say to these other people, hang on a minute, you know, we've been in a negative charge for so long just because – Something comes along and has the appearance of being positive, white, love and light, doesn't mean you go for it, you know. It, it, we've got to be careful. We've got to be not so naive and so eager to, um, to relinquish this, this challenging reality so quickly. So just I say to people, just take a step back. Don't be so quick to go for it. Reassess. Really discern. Go deep into your heart and use that as the point of reference. And see, then make the decision. And wherever you choose to go is up to you. I'm not telling anyone they have to go where I'm going. But what I do want to do is provide people with the information because I've had these experiences. I've got that point of reference. And at least then people are better informed to make that decision for themselves.